I want to bring in two Republican congressmen to talk about these strong allegations and also the turmoil in the House trying to find a new Republican speaker. But first, we'd like to say that we did invite the chairman of the Benghazi committee, Trey Gowdy, uh, to come and appear on this program this morning to respond, but he declined. But with us now are Republican Representative Tom Cole of Oklahoma and Republican Representative Raul Labrador of Idaho. Gentlemen, thank you both for thank being you. here. Uh, Congressman you. Labrador, I'll just start with you. You saw Jake Tapper's piece. Uh, Brad, Brad Podliska is a self-described Republican, says he would never vote for Hillary Clinton, but that the investigation is political. What do you make of it? Let's be clear what he said. He said the investigation turned political according to his opinion. And when he was asked specifically if the investigation was political, he said no. He said, in fact, that the investigation started properly, that they were investigating what happened in Benghazi, and that he felt that it had changed. So let's not mix this up because... But regardless, he's saying that the reason why uh, he was upset is because it turned political. Yeah, but no matter, no matter where he it just started. had a disagreement with the people who were doing the investigation. Remember what Watergate, Watergate started with an investigation about whether the Richard Nixon administration actually had anything to do with the break-in at Watergate. It ended up being about some so missing tapes. you think it's tapes. okay to have turned... It's no, I don't, I don't think Hillary it would. Well, that's what they found out. They've been asking questions about what Hillary Clinton did. They asked her for her emails. She wouldn't deliver the emails, and they didn't know why they didn't deliver the emails. They didn't know if there was a smoking gun in there or anything, so they turned their attention to that. And, and in fact, the only reason there's any politics or we even have an investigation is because the Obama administration and Hillary Clinton decided a few months before an election that they were going to lie about what happened at Benghazi. Let's be clear about that. If they hadn't told different stories about what happened in Benghazi, we wouldn't even have an investigation. Congressman Cole, let me just read what the Clinton campaign said in response to this. Uh, a spokesman said, these are explosive allegations. This Republican whistleblower's account from inside the Benghazi committee may provide the most definitive proof to date that this taxpayer-funded investigation has been a partisan sham from the start. Uh, you know, regardless, it gives them some some ammunition. It does, but it's worth noting that, uh, you know, until the last couple of weeks, most of the attacks on this committee have come from the right because it was seen as being too judicious and not being partisan. Frankly, I, you know, this is one where you have to look at the committee chairman and look at what he's done and make a judgment. Uh, Trey Gowdy is a person of absolute personal integrity. The fact that he's not here and Raul and I are is a pretty good indication he's not trying to exploit this for to advance himself in any way. He's interviewed multiple witnesses, I think seven eyewitnesses, 41 witnesses that nobody else has done. And, and uh, I, you know, I think he's conducted himself well. Now, he'll be under extra scrutiny going forward. But I think at the end of the day, the committee's work will stand or fall on its own. But I have a lot of confidence in Trey. Okay, so let's talk about uh, the story that gave me a lot of blisters on my feet running after you both this <laughs> week because uh, there is a big void in the leadership of the House. Uh, we we'll start with you, Congressman Cole, on this. After Kevin McCarthy dropped out, you and others were pleading with Paul Ryan, uh, now the Ways and Means chair, of course, the former vice presidential candidate, to to take the job. He doesn't want the job. You've spoken <laughs> to him. Do you think that you and others will be able to convince him to you say know, yes? I hope we can, but in the end, I trust Paul to make the right decision, and uh, he's got a lot of things to consider. He's got his family, his career, and he certainly shouldn't do it if he's not willing to embrace it with a lot of zest. But the, the, I think this is coming to him as the logical consensus person. And uh, having served on his committee, having known him and his family for many years, uh, particularly on wife's family, I just have enormous confidence it's the right man uh, at the right moment. But again, whether or not he chooses to do that is up to him. Congressman, I know you and your fellow members of the House Freedom Caucus, you have endorsed Daniel Webster, Congressman right. from Florida, former Speaker of the House there. You continue to do so. If Paul Ryan does decide to, to come in, could you ultimately see yourself and selves as a group backing Paul Ryan? You know, Paul Ryan is a friend. He's been very good to me the last five years that I've been in Congress. We have a close relationship. We have worked on a lot of issues. I spoke to him just on Friday about this. But we have endorsed Daniel Webster. And until somebody's a declared candidate, we're not going to move to a new candidate. Now, if new candidates declare themselves, then we're going to ask them to come talk to the House Freedom Caucus. Because it's not about the who. It's about the what. What are we going to do in the House to change the culture? What are we going to do so we can get 247 Republicans together on the same page? What are we going to do so every member of the conference feels like they, they're they actually uh, valuable and they're doing the things that they need to do? You know, and Congressman Cole, you, you, 
Congressman Labrador and his uh, colleagues in the caucus, Freedom Caucus, they've been very openly frustrated, even had a lot of animosity towards your friends in the leadership. John Boehner is a very good friend of yours, so is Kevin McCarthy. Do you think that their points and their sort of concern is valid? Yeah, I do. Look, I think there's a lot of concern about the rules, and I think we're always willing to relook at those, and we all, when we should. Uh, I actually think this process, uh, as chaotic as it looks from the outside, and as difficult as it's been for some individuals, it's probably been a pretty healthy one. Uh, right now, uh, you, you know, think that the chaos is healthy? Yeah, I actually do because I think a lot of things are being aired that probably needed to be aired. Uh, I'm proud of the speaker for the actions he took. Uh, you know, he saw, he saw the need for new leadership. I'm proud of Kevin McCarthy to say I'm not the one. Uh, we'll f we'll work it out. In the meantime, uh, look. Uh, John Boehner remains speaker while the process goes underway. And uh, if uh, my friend Paul Ryan decides to run, I think uh, ultimately he'll win. But if not, it's not like we're going to be without a speaker. I mean, the longer this goes on, uh, the longer John but, Boehner's tenure but it's lasts, more than which is something he doesn't want. <laughs> but, uh, you know, that's just the irony but of it. But it's more than just about this moment and about this speaker. It's about the larger discussion of, right. about the Republican Party. I've heard others say to me, Congressman Labrador, that they're concerned about what this could mean for the Republican chances in 2016, that it just looks like Republican Republicans are in, are in so much disarray that it could hurt your chances. And to get all the things you want, whether repealing Obamacare or defunding Planned Parenthood, you're going to need a Republican in the White House. Well, and, and that's the key. That's what we want as well. We want to make sure that we're together as a conference because we should be fighting the Democrats, not the Republicans. We shouldn't be fighting each other. You know, Tom and I get along really well. We disagree very many times, but we get along really well. We're friends. I think I'm friends with many of the people on the other side, but we need to get to a point that we figure out how we make the House work, how we allow every member to participate, how we allow the process to work. And we have to make sure that we understand that it's, there are a lot of other people who could also bring the conference together. You know, all the focus is on Paul. I don't know if he wants to do the job, but we have other people in the conference that I think could actually bring the conference together because they have the process. That's why we supported Daniel Webster. You know, what people don't understand is that we had a candidate in the race who was actually closer to us philosophically, Jason Chaffetz, who is also a friend of mine. But we went with the guy who wants to go for the process. He's actually, his, his conservative voting record is much different than mine. But he ran the House of Representatives and the Senate in Florida in a way that brought people together. I think Paul could do it. I think Rob Bishop, I don't know if you agree. Somebody big, like Rob Bishop would be Rob a great Bishop. would be a great. He was also Speaker of the House in Utah. There's people like that that can help us come together as a conference. Well, it's nice to see you guys yeah. getting along so well now and yeah. hopefully that your factions will get along. Our, our disagreements <laughs> tend to be tactical, not theological. <laughs> yeah. We actually believe in the same thing. But but tactics do matter. Thank they you, do matter. Congressman Labrador, Congressman Cole. Thanks. Thank you so much for joining me.